Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of Toy Fair 2015, the official Toy Fair coverage with the Toy Industry Association. I'm Michael Artsis, this is Be Terrific, and we are proud to bring you, with the Toy Association, Toy Industry Association, your live continuing coverage of Toy Fair 2015 from the Jacob K. Javits Center in New York City. Thank you so much for watching. I've got Manuel Torres right here. Manuel started his life in Mexico City, has become the head of global sales and publishing and properties and everything. Your title is about, it's not even long <laughs> enough to fit on the screen. I mean, it's too long to fit on the screen, but you're at Nickelodeon. You oversee Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a lot of other stuff. I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Splinter was my favorite. There's Donatello. Uh, obviously, he's not the, the turtle. Right. Uh, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, and uh, I'm forgetting one now. Um, Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael, and? Uh, who are we missing? Who are we missing? Raphael, Somebody's gonna Donatello, Michelangelo, and, Donat and Donatello, right? No, we said Donatello, Michelangelo, Raphael. Who's the last one? Oh my God, we, I completely like I'm blanking now too. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe we're doing this live. The chat room's going to have to help me out. We've got a live chat room on uh, beterrific.com. Michelangelo, we said, yeah. We said Michelangelo, Raphael, Raphael, Donatello, and we said Splinter, so it's not, you know, obviously. Leonardo. Leonardo, we forgot Leonardo. <laughs> Where was my mind? <laughs> I'm wearing blue, that's I, Leo. <laughs> I love the Ninja Turtles, by the way. Yes, love, love, love the Ninja Turtles. Um, my favorite property as well, for so many years. It, no. Unbelievable. How are they still relevant today? How is that even possible? Because they were popular when I was young. Uh, so 1984, uh, that's when uh, Peter Lair and you know, Kevin Eastman uh, came up with the idea. They were you know, pretty much having fun. And uh, these uh, like struggling writers, they're, they're uh, truly uh, you know, playing with, uh, I guess, their minds and uh, you know, came up with these uh, terrific characters. Uh, based, you know, very, very silly, like kind of, uh, you know, fooling around. And um, the, the actu actually the comic book started, they were kind of dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, just very few of them uh, were published, published by them. They were barely making any money. And then when uh, they bump into a, a licensing agent who told them, you know, I think there's some potential with these characters. They're super engaging, they're super fun. Uh, let's see what we can do with them. And uh, that's when they, you know, came about uh, different uh, toy companies. They uh, uh, show and tell their story. Uh, they met with uh, Playmates, uh, Playmates Toys out of uh, LA. And Playmates, uh, I guess, very visionary at that time. They said, you know, this seems to be a lot of fun. They seem to be, uh, these, uh, these characters have uh, the potential not only to convert into uh, great toys, but the uh, comedic aspect of the, of, the, of the IP and their story, plus being four, uh, you know, like really good and close friends, they're, 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 they're brothers. This is, uh, this is likely to be something different than what we're seeing, you know, around the world. And that's how they came about. They bump into Playmates. Uh, Playmates had faith in them. Playmates also spend, uh, a, you know, invested money on creating content with uh, a Fred Wolf and uh, and then the story, you know, till we know by now. I used to watch them every day after school. I loved them. I thought they were amazing. I, I like Splinter the, the best, as I said before. Uh, I don't know why. He was the squirrel or the, the, the ferret. What was he? Was he a ferret or a squirrel or a, a rat? rat? He was a rat. <laughs> I don't know why I liked him. Their master, their yeah. father, right? <laughs> yes. Um, and, and it was just, it's such a great story. Yes. Um, and it, it really, like, holds true today. There's a new movie coming out, right? Um, yeah, they, well, we had the first movie uh, last year. Okay. It was did phenomenal worldwide. And movie two is coming out June of uh, 2016. Very nice, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Now, you you talk about licensing a little. You yes. you know a lot about licensing. You've had an interesting career. It starts in Mexico City. Yes. How do you get from Mexico City to being you know the head honcho at Nickelodeon? No, no, no. Thank you for the head honcho. Not at all. But uh, I started basically um, in Mexico City. My background: I'm a CPA. Okay. Uh, I see. I think CPA by training and. Uh, but my heart has always been in sales and marketing. And um, very early in my career, uh, my first job pretty much was in an accounting firm, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you know, transformed right now into something else. And uh, started doing some consulting, tax auditing, and to be honest, uh, quite boring. Uh, and more so, I, you know, I wanted to land you know, somewhere else in the marketing and sales fields. 
Uh, I moved into uh, a little bit of candy and confectionery consulting. Sure. Uh, and then Unilever uh, was the one who, uh, where I found a great opportunity to learn about marketing and sales in Mexico. Okay. As a trainee. Wow. Uh, I spent there like around four years, and from there, uh, kids and the kids' world, the kids' marketing became kind of a great opportunity for me uh, to tap into product development and marketing. So that's where I went to, uh, to Mattel, Mattel Toys in Mexico, which uh, uh, was a company early 90s, who was like growing uh, ferociously year by year, but uh, at the advent of mass merchants in Mexico, particularly Walmart, that opened kind of a new landscape for, uh, for expanding into categories that traditionally had not been their focus. And Toy One was, was one of those. So, um, started in trade marketing, managing a couple of brands in Mexico, probably you're familiar with Hot Wheels. Sure, absolutely. With, uh, Power Wheels. Uh -huh. and, uh, and from there, I moved, they moved me uh, to headquarters in Los Angeles with Mattel. Very nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, started working with uh, international markets, uh, both on the trade marketing side as well as on the product development and marketing. And that led, you know, as I was uh, working closely with a bunch of uh, licensors, owners of uh, a third party IP and studios, um, that's when Warner Brothers came to me and, uh, you know, they said, we want to grow, we want to expand our business into Mexico, we want to move back. <laughs> so I went to Warner Brothers Consumer Products. Yeah. Uh, managed the office in, uh, in Mexico City, and uh, sooner Nickelodeon and MTV had the same challenge, but for the region, for Latin America. And they offered me, you know, to open the consumer products office out of Miami to take care of uh, Latin, Latin American operation and expanding the business. Back then, you know, uh, SpongeBob was a sure. great IP, and uh, with very great, uh, I would say, follow-up in, uh, in Brazil, in Mexico, the two most important territories in the region. And Dora was starting to, uh, to become important, mainly in Mexico. The properties are amazing. Dora the Explorer, SpongeBob SquarePants, you guys have now uh, the Power Rangers uh, on, under uh, the umbrella as well. Um, but it just goes on and on. Everybody knows Nickelodeon. You missed the Double Dare years. Those were my favorite years yes, too. Yes, definitely. Um, and, and, and I love Family Double Dare. Yes. Uh, of course, there were great shows too, like Get the Picture, picture mm -hmm. uh, which were a lot of fun. A lot of kids' game shows. Nickelodeon's great. I think that the, the products that come out of them, uh, the shows are amazing too. I remember the Double Dare products. Right. I, of course, remember the, the, um, the Ninja Turtle products, right? Yes. Um, what is it about Nickelodeon's products that make them so licensable to create toys out of them? Well, I guess, uh, first, uh, I think, you know, there's, 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 for example, Dora and SpongeBob, I would say, um, two great shows, incredible content, incredible storytelling. It all starts with great storytelling. Um, both of those shows, Toys and product became some sort of accidental. We, we were never expecting those to become like an incredible, uh, I would say, uh, third party or product development uh, bonanza. And they truly, the market, the consumer, started connecting with the brand and they wanted that kind of brand extension. They wanted to leave that brand extension. And slowly but surely, products start peppering into the marketplace. We start working with different set of licensees they start, retailers started believing in the brand because of uh, you know, pent up demand that existed out there. And it became very natural, a uh, natural process. And that's why I believe those brands have lasted that long, both on TV and also in terms of uh, product offering. In the case of Ninja Turtles, I guess, similarly, right? It started as an accident, as I was uh, telling you earlier. Um, but then as Playmates, I think, became a very important partner of this formula. Uh, and as toys, uh, you know, in 1989, they became a huge hit out of the gate. Sure. Then I think that opened the floodgate for the rest of the merchandise and the rest of the categories. So uh, I would say, depending on the IP um, and depending on, on, on uh, that level of conversion, we, we see the opportunity for expanding 
or kind of retracting and moving into something else. I love it, you, you've got such a, a really interesting career path and, and interesting story. I mean, you go from being an accountant, you really show that anything is possible. You really seem like you set your mind to doing what you wanted to do. You were an accountant, uh -huh. um, you thought that that was maybe a path, then you realized you weren't happy, and you found a way to find your path all the way to Nickelodeon. Uh, very interesting story. I, I think it's very inspirational. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure. And, and what is the toughest part about licensing the products? Is it finding the right partner? Is it finding uh, the right manufacturer? Is it figuring out how to uh, market it correctly once you get it out there? Because I mean, obviously the shows make uh, a great marketing for the products that come out after. I think it's a combination of all the things that you just mentioned. I think timing and luck also per, uh, you know, play a very important factor. You never know what's around you, to be honest. Yeah. And you ultimately don't know what's going to be kind of distracting uh, the interest of consumers. But again, I think if you stick to a great storytelling, if you stick to uh, kind of uh, really engaging uh, content, uh, the likelihood of that becoming, you know, or converting into product uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be more positive. Uh, uh, that's on the one end. Also keeping, keeping the retail interest, right? Yeah. Ke making sure that, that every single of the uh, value chain, uh, I would say members, right? They you know, remain engaged and remain excited about, uh, about your IP. It's, it's fundamental because it, it all starts from the consumer. Consumer likes the, the IP, they like the story, they want to play with it, they want to interact with, uh, with those characters, they fall in love with those characters. And then they start, uh, you know, looking for product, looking for merchandise. Favorite toy growing up? Favorite toy growing up, um, I guess Hot Wheels. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I love the, the Hot Wheels and the Matchbox cars. I really wanted one of those Power Wheels. You mentioned that. Never got one. It was a little, I was a little too uh, ahead of it. Uh, they really became popular a little bit after uh, I was a kid, but they had just started to come out. And Toy Fair is amazing, is it not? It is. It's amazing. It's still an incredible market for everyone, for us to understand trends, yeah. to see what's happening, not only here, but around the, the world, yeah. for us to engage with inventors yeah. and see newcomers in the marketplace, and also to see how relevant our IP is, uh, is becoming to them and to the market in general. Manuel Torres, thank you so much for giving us your time here it's a on pleasure. Be Terrific. Thank you. Leonardo. Leonardo, <laughs> we won't forget now. We love Leonardo, we love them all. It's Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and of course, Raphael and Splinter. We'll be back with a whole lot more console wars and then Todd McFarlane coming up on Be Terrific. Don't go anywhere. This is your live official 2015 Toy Fair coverage with the Toy Industry Association on Be Terrific. We'll be back right after this.